Hello and welcome to an episode of Ozpol Explained. I am your host David and today I'm going to give you the briefest rundown of every single federally registered political party in Australia. Some parties get deregistered, some only exist for one election or they change name or they get deregistered. So if you're like, what about insert party here? I did not forget them. They might not exist anymore or they might exist after I publish this episode. This is a brief rundown of 2022 federal election policies. So some of this information will still be relevant in the future. Some of it will not. So for the sake of time, I'm going to just pick a small handful of policies and they have a lot more policy platforms, but we can only fit so much in such a little time. So if anything sparks your interest, go check them out. I'm also not going to comment on any of these policies. It is entirely up to you whether you think they are good or not. So let's dive right in with some major parties. Labour is the oldest still going political party in Australia, they're centre left, and their main policies in 2022 are things about tackling the cost of living and housing. That includes things like strengthening public services like Medicare, the National Disability Insurance Scheme, and reduced costs of subsidised medicines on the Pharmaceutical Benefits Scheme, all of which are programs that previous Labour governments created. Their climate policy focuses mostly on upgrading electricity infrastructure, so this involves investing in renewables, uh, creating over 600,000 jobs, uh, starting domestic manufacturing of renewable energy, electric vehicles, and ultimately reducing emissions by 43% by 2030, and then also reducing power prices by 26% by 2030. They have multiple housing policies involving $10 billion into public housing to make 30,000 homes in the next five years, a low deposit scheme for 10,000 a year, first home buyers in regional areas, and a 10,000 a year scheme where they will contribute up to 40% of a price of a house to low and middle income earners to reduce costs on mortgage repayments, make sure they can buy properties with much smaller deposits, and then you don't pay rent on that 40% unless you choose to purchase it in full at a later time. This will be a federal version of an idea that exists already in Western Australia, Victoria and the UK. They want to create a strong federal independent commission against corruption, which will be able to have retrospective powers to investigate on its own volition. From now on, that's going to be referred to as a federal ICAC. You'll hear that a lot. They want to put nurses in aged care homes 24 seven, maintain low taxes, end the wage stagnation of the past nine years, make wage theft a crime, and strengthen job security for gig workers and short-term contracts. The coalition is made up of four parties, so that's the Liberals, the Nationals, the Liberal National Party of Queensland, where they formally fused, and the Country Liberal Party. They're all centre-right conservatives, and they use their numbers collectively to form government. So uh, it's effectively Liberals are a major party supported by three minor parties. A lot of their policies are exactly the same across the board because again, they will be voting as one when they get into parliament. So a basic rundown for the Liberals is they are pro-private businesses and deregulation with the exception of unions, which they want to increase regulation on. They want to reduce public spending on certain services. Their cost of living relief includes temporary measures like cutting the fuel excise. So it will be 22 cents less for the next five months. One off payments of $250 to people on government payments and $420 to those on the low and middle income tax offset before it gets phased out after this year. They want tax incentives to embrace a digital economy and upskill and train employees. They want to create another 1500 jobs in the defense manufacturing industry, as well as increase military funding. Are against introducing a federal ICAC, warning that it would be a kangaroo court. Their emissions reduction target by 2030 is 26-28%. to 28%. Their plan for net zero by 2050 is to invest in low emissions technologies, carbon capture storage, and low emissions steel production, as well as rely on technology that hasn't been invented yet to reach the final 15% of emissions in their target. Their housing affordability scheme involves increasing the amount of people who can buy a home with a 5-2% to deposit instead of a 20% deposit. So not decreasing the overall cost, but making it easier for now up to 35,000 people a year to start paying off a mortgage. The Nationals are more of a country focused part of the coalition. So their key policies include things like agriculture, farmers, regional jobs, and 
things like, you know, mineral resources and coal. So they support finding new gas basins and mineral provinces. They want to remove regulation on major resource projects and reduce the environmental approval process time. They want to invest $7.2 billion for the Road to Recovery program to upgrade key regional road corridors and provide $1 billion for the National Forest Industries Plan to support the growing forestry industry. Fun fact, the West Australian Nationals and the South Australian Nationals are not actually part of the coalition. So if they do get elected federally, they may or may not align themselves with the coalition and could vote entirely independently. The Liberal National Party of Queensland is where they form together uh, and they run in just that state. The Country Liberal Party also only runs in Northern Territory. The Country Liberal Party, by the way, wants statehood for the Northern Territory. A lot of their policies are pretty much the same because again, any seat won by any of these people contributes to the coalition forming government. The Greens are the largest of the non-major parties. They are a progressive left-wing party. They have a strong focus on climate change and green policies, very environmentally focused, so 75% emissions reduction by 2030. They want job guarantees for coal miners and gas workers to support them financially during a rapid phase out of fossil fuels and upgrading the economy to a renewable energy economy. They want renewable energies as a, both a domestic form of electricity production as well as exporting energy to neighbouring countries to replace coal exports. They want to end new fossil fuel infrastructure by 2030, end the $11 billion a year we give to fossil fuel companies in subsidies. They're big on things like social inclusion, multiculturalism, LGBTQIA issues. They want to have a treaty with Indigenous Australians and constitutional recognition. They want to legalise cannabis. They want to raise welfare above the poverty line to $88 a week, expand Medicare services to include dental, free healthcare and education, and wipe out student debt. To do this, they want to tax billionaires and increase corporate taxes from 30% to 40% on giant corporations with over $100 million in profits. Their housing policy involves building 1 million homes over the next 20 years to create jobs and decrease the cost of housing. They also want to establish a strong federal ICAC. Pauline Hanson's One Nation is a far-right nationalist party, best known for its founder, Pauline Hanson, whose maiden speech was infamous for claiming Australia was being swamped by Asians, who has been a vocal critic of immigration and multiculturalism, specifically Asian immigrants and Muslim immigrants. One Nation wants to heavily reduce immigration, reduce firearm restrictions, doesn't believe in climate change, and is against vaccine mandates, and has been critical of vaccines in the past. United Australia Party. They are a right-wing populist minor party. They're against vaccine mandates, lockdowns, and border closures. They are pro-nuclear power and mining resources. They want to cap interest rates for homes at 3% for the next five years, and they want to abolish the National Cabinet, which is a decision-making forum where the state premiers, territory chief ministers, and the prime minister have a monthly meeting to discuss issues and coordinate with each other on shared responsibilities. It's not a legislative body, it is just a forum where heads of government discuss ideas together. Teal Independence You've probably heard about them, they're a bunch of climate action focused independents challenging liberals around the country. They are not a political party, each one has their own policy platform, but they are partially funded by Climate 200, which aims to even out the funding disparity between major parties and independents, but doesn't have a say in the candidates' policies. And the labelled teal comes from how they're more climate focused than the blue liberals, but not as left wing as the greens. Not all independents have the labelled teal, so you should research the independent in your area. Informed Medical Opinion Party. They're against vaccines, not just the COVID vaccine, but just any in general. The vast majority of their policies are to do with people not having vaccines. They want fluoride to be removed from the water, they are anti-GMO food, and pro-naturopathy. The Great Australia Party. Far right, formed by a former One Nation member, they are anti-immigration, they want to abolish the GST, abolish income tax, and abolish compulsory super, and instead replace that with a nationalised banking system. Also want to reduce firearm restrictions and question the validity of various different courts in Australia and believe that the constitution needs to be restored. 
They are also against vaccines and fluoride. The Animal Justice Party. Their main focus, obviously, is animal welfare, which they express in topics like establishing an animal rights commission, abolishing animal experimentation unless it can be proved that it won't harm the animal, banning animals in circuses, recreational hunting, and animal races, banning animal live export, their pro-climate action against fossil fuels, and supporting public services. Australian Christians. They're right-wing and base their policies off their interpretation of the Bible. So this includes things like defining marriage between a man and a woman, and describes marriage equality as sad. They're anti-abortion, anti-euthanasia. They want to enforce a moral code to mass media to remove excessive violence, sexualization, and obscenity. And censor the internet so all mature content is filtered as the default norm for every device that can access the internet. They also want an inquiry into the benefits of raising the drinking age to 21, the Australian Citizens Party. They want to have a national bank and reverse privatization. Abolish public-private partnerships, so having a fully publicly owned and operated infrastructure program that relies on that national bank, and massively expand healthcare services. They are pro-nuclear power, they want to abolish the GST and replace it with a 0.1% tax on financial speculators. So basically, one dollar for every thousand for turnover in stocks, bonds, and currency exchanges made by traders and they do not believe in climate change. Australian Democrats. A centrist party. Their key issues are accountability, environment, social and economic inequality. They want to establish a national integrity commission, have more transparency for political donations, a financial cap on electoral and campaign spending, and have tri-annual audits of use of parliamentary entitlements. Their climate policy is 66% emissions reduction by 2030 through things like a carbon tax, end fossil fuel subsidies, transition away from fossil fuels towards renewables, and are against nuclear power. They also want to increase welfare above the poverty line. They want to raise the tax three threshold from $18,200 to $37,000, and raise taxes on anyone with more than $100 million in wealth or $10 million in inheritance. They want an increase in new affordable homes by changing negative gearing to apply to only new investments to encourage more houses to be built, and then tie rent increases to the increase in the median wage. Australian Federation Party. Part of their platform is to allow each member to have a free vote every time. So usually party policy is determined collectively in a party room, and then members then usually vote the same way in Parliament after that. They want to encourage and expand public input through things like monthly town hall meetings in electorates, Democracy 101 workshops to educate people, and have members in that electorate participate in those workshops. And they want to create an app for providing digital feedback. To fix climate change, they want to do this through agricultural reform and soil management for carbon capture. They also believe that the COVID-19 response was totalitarian and reject mandatory vaccines. Australian progressives. Pro-republic centre-aligned progressives. Their key issues are tackling climate change, net zero by 2030, ending poverty, ending tax breaks for investors, and increasing social security payments above the poverty line. They want to establish a federal ICAC. They are pro a multicultural Australia, including repealing section 44 of the constitution that bars dual citizens from being in federal parliament. They also want to increase refugee intake. They are pro gender equality and removing exemptions from anti-discrimination laws. Australian Values Party. They have a few key values of freedom for the individual slash freedom of religion and person's medical choices, commitment to the rule of law, equality for people regardless of race, gender, age, sexual orientation, and mutual respect, recognizing English as a national language and key to the unification of society. It was founded by someone whose key focus was on veterans, mental health, and suicide prevention. They say that we shouldn't seesaw between left and right, so to demonstrate, they say they are pro-life. But they're also pro-choice for the individual. To balance that, they don't want to fully ban abortion, 
but do it in some context, like a full-term abortion, they want to provide counselling to people who have one, allow doctors to personally object to providing one, and mandate data reporting about abortion services. They're pro-nuclear power, pro-hydroelectric, and say regardless of which side you come down on climate change, we should do more. Fusion party. When you type, you forgot this party, you're probably thinking of this one. It's a fusion of science party, pirate party, secular party, vote planet, and climate justice party. So they're into the environment, secular humanism, so separation of church and state, no chaplains in schools, and techno-progressives. So investing in scientific research, like how to extend the human lifespan, creating industries for space technology, biological computing, fusion technology, they want to improve education funding, big on climate action, not just net zero by 2030, but actually negative carbon emissions in 10 years. They want real-time disclosure of political donations over $1,000 or more, allow public servants to no longer be restricted in what they can say about governments, a universal basic income to get rid of poverty, and reform copyright laws and bring things into the public domain so corporations can't hold onto creative works indefinitely. Federal ICAC now. They want a federal independent corruption watchdog, and they want it now. Indigenous Aboriginal Party of Australia. They focus on indigenous issues, like stopping development projects that would destroy native land, indigenous education to preserve and nurture cultural identity and indigenous languages, decrease indigenous incarceration rates and stop juvenile detention, constitutional recognition of indigenous Australians, and they only put forward indigenous candidates. Legalise cannabis. They want to legalise cannabis. They want it treated the same way as alcohol, allow personal use, let people grow their own weed, get rid of previous criminal convictions, and regulate the selling of cannabis. Liberal Democratic Party. Right-wing libertarians, so a lot less government regulation and a lot less taxes. So they propose instead of having a progressive tax system with different brackets for higher income earners, they just want a straight flat 20% for anything over $40,000 a year, and then a flat 20% corporate tax. They want voting to be optional, allow the public to force by-elections between election cycles, and to have petitions be able to force legislation to be repealed. They are against net zero by 2050 and against the renewable energy target as they perceive that to be government regulation and are pro-nuclear power. They are against vaccine requirements, mask requirements, lockdowns, border restrictions, etc. And want a freedom of speech amendment in the constitution, which also includes repealing section 18c of the Racial Discrimination Act and similar legislation. The Reason Party. They're centre-left secular libertarians. So drug reform to change it from a criminal issue to a health issue, have pill testing at festivals, legalise cannabis, remove tax exemptions from religious organisations, they support religious freedom as long as it isn't discriminatory, and want to limit public funding to religious institutes and remove religious prayers from parliament. They also want to invest in public services like dental in Medicare, increasing welfare above the poverty line, and rental assistance. You may have heard of the Sex Party, which was what the Reason Party was originally called. They want to decriminalise sex work. Seniors United Party of Australia. They are focused on the elderly, with policies to do with enhancing Medicare, the pharmaceutical benefit scheme, more nurses in aged care, affordable aged care, capping retirement age at 67, and a national palliative care scheme. Shooters, Fishers and Farmers Party. They're a right-wing country party that want to decrease foreign land investment, increase farmers' land rights so they have absolute private property rights and veto over mining operations, they want to expand the live animal export industry, expand people's ability to recreationally fish in Commonwealth waters, and oppose the creation and expansion of any marine park networks. And of course, review the 1996 National Firearms Agreement and expand gun ownership rights. Socialist Alliance. They're socialists, so very left-wing, anti-capitalist, anti-privatisation, and big on workers' rights and collective ownership. 
They want to tackle wealth inequality by increasing the top tax bracket to 70% on anyone earning over $200,000 a year. They want to scrap the GST, abolish subsidies to private companies, nationalize the banks, mines, energy companies, and put them under collective control of the workers. Free healthcare, affordable housing, free education at all levels, free public transport, 100% renewables within 5-10 to 10 years, welcome refugees and abolish boat turnbacks, put the police under the community control and abolish prison sentences for non-violent crimes, and replace them with community rehabilitation programs. Sustainable Australia Party focuses on sustainability and corruption. So things like promoting environmental biodiversity, creating an anti-corruption watchdog, more transparency on donations, cap political donations and government election spending, climate action, water security, ending land clearing and rehabilitating land. They want to abolish negative gearing and capital gains discounts to stop prices going up in favour of investors for houses. They also want Australia's population to max out at 30 million. It's currently around 25.6 million. They say that they're not against immigration, just that it should be capped at 70,000 a year, which is including the humanitarian intake of refugees, but still maintain our commitment to the 1951 UN Refugee Convention. They also want to encourage less population growth through limiting any government tax incentives to only the first two children that someone has. TNL. They tried to register as the New Liberals, but were challenged by the Liberal Party. So to avoid confusion, they are very different from the Conservative Liberal Party. They're socially progressive. Their key policies include a federal ICAC. Net zero emissions by 2030 to avoid the worst of climate change. Ending indefinite offshore detention of refugees and allowing them to be resettled in Australia. They want constitutional reform to become a republic, changing the date of Australia Day as part of reconciliation, have Indigenous recognition in the Constitution and a Bill of Rights. They also want to lower the voting age to 16. They're pro-LGBTQIA plus inclusion, more parental leave for both men and women, and for disability they want to create both a building and digital code for accessibility standards. The Local Party of Australia. They want all their members to have a free vote in Parliament. They also want a citizen's jury where members of the electorates get to have a say in decisions that would impact them. So it's very light in terms of set policies, however they have some key issues like justice reform to reduce crime and incarceration, reduce gambling harm from pokies by limiting how much money they can take per day, supporting Tasmania's salmon industry. Speaking of which, here's a bunch of state specific parties. Victorian Socialists. They're socialists. They want to make airlines, buses, trains, trams, Telstra, mines, and banks all publicly owned. No more private public partnerships and have fully publicly funded operated infrastructure construction, ending the GST and negative gearing, and then taxing the rich significantly higher, with a 90% tax bracket for those earning over $300,000 a year. They want to strengthen workers' rights, right to strike, abolish all anti union laws social justice for LGBTQIA plus people, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders, and refugees. They wish to defund the police and abolish prison sentences for non-violent crimes, abolish private prisons and redirect that funding to community rehabilitation programs and prevention strategies. Centre Alliance. Their South Australian-based Centre Party. Their key policies are establishing a federal ICAC and strengthening whistleblower protections. They want to regulate claims of what's made in Australia, clear ideas of what percentage it is, and then requiring government departments to buy more Australian-made products and services. They want to change our foreign investment laws to be in line with New Zealand's, more regulations on the gambling industry. Western Australia Party. It's a centre party focused on, you guessed it, Western Australia, with things like increasing WA share of the GST, more Commonwealth contracts in WA, and at least 10% of the public service employees to be hired in Western Australia. We're nearing the end. Here are a bunch of parties named after one person. Some of them only have two people running, but they are registered parties, so they are included. Jackie Lambie Network, named after a Tasmanian senator, 
focuses on veterans affairs and suicide prevention, want to promote domestic manufacturing instead of free trade agreements, they want transparency reforms like a federal ICAC and stricter political donation laws, they are opposed to foreign influence, specifically the Chinese government and businesses trying to interfere in elections and buying up Australian land and ports. Catter's Australia Party, a conservative country party named after Bob Catter in Queensland. They focus on regional development, Christian values and property ownership rights. They want farmers to have the right to deny mining development on their land. They want a regional development bank to increase regional development. They want to focus on Australian goods and manufacturings, loosen gun ownership restrictions, justice reform whereby a young offender doesn't go to jail or straight back to the community, but instead create a third option where they can go to an approved remote property to work and learn job skills instead. Kim for Canberra, ACT based progressive independent and academic Kim Rubenstein. They want a federal ICAC, 50% emissions reduction by 2030, implement the findings of the Respect at Work National Inquiry to improve women's safety in Parliament, support a constitutional First Nations voice to Parliament. David Pocock, named after ACT independent progressive and former rugby player David Pocock. They want a federal ICAC and truth in political advertising laws. They want to increase wages and use tax incentives so private landlords will increase housing supply, net zero by 2050 and invest in renewable energy for electricity as well as supporting increasing the electricity vehicle market, increase our humanitarian intake of refugees and support multiculturalism and want a First Nations voice to parliament. Darren Hinch's Justice Party a right-wing party focused on criminal reform to basically be tougher on criminals. They want longer jail sentences for violent crimes to tighten restrictions on who can pay for bail and make parole tougher. They also want a public national register of sex offenders. Drew Pavlo Democratic Alliance. They're left-wing, they want a federal ICAC, they want a First Nations voice to parliament, they want welfare above the poverty line, stronger action on climate change, increase the affordability of housing and reduce our economic dependence on trade deals, specifically with China. They also support Hong Kong's independence and self-determination and recognize Tibet as a country, Rex Patrick team. They're a centrist political party formed by an independent from South Australia. So they focus a lot on South Australian manufacturing like submarines, they want political donation reforms, a federal ICAC, net zero by 2050 and invest in renewable energy, as well as create an aerial federal firefighting fleet to tackle increased severity of bushfires. They also want mandatory security checks for all ministers to prevent foreign influence and set up a Senate inquiry into our relationship with China. And there you have it, every single federally registered political party in Australia as of May 2022. <sighs> anyway, enjoy, have fun, go vote, look at the parties that interest you, figure out your preferences, enjoy Democracy Sausage, subscribe, share, all those sorts of things. Thank you so much to my supporters on Patreon. Mwah, mwah, I love you, but platonically, it's okay. Not like that. And I will see you next time. I will see you next time.